AI is moving at insane pace. Last week was the craziest week I've ever seen. Today is probably one of the most single crazy days I've ever seen in AI with just news announcement after news announcement and Bill Gates and Jensen Huang from NVIDIA and Google releasing Bard and Adobe making announcements and Microsoft making announcements. And it's all just kind of escalating and every single day we're seeing more and more and more crazy advancements and it's just getting crazier and crazier and i'm absolutely loving nerding out about this stuff I'm, i am blown away every single day by what i'm discovering we're talking about things that people have said we won't see that for years and then weeks later we're seeing it that's how fast things are moving this is actually becoming exponential and it's so freaking exciting right now i couldn't be more Guys, I thought we'd have about a year as this AI stuff unfolded. Uh, it's out of control. It's exponential. I thought this conversation we'd need to have would be about a year from now, but it needs to happen now. After last week's insane week in the AI world, you would think that things would start to slow down. But this week has already started off equally as insane as last week. Last Tuesday, we saw huge announcements in the AI space from OpenAI launching GPT-4 to Google announcing they're going to be putting AI inside of their workspace tools. Last week also saw Midjourney version 5 and Microsoft 365 Copilot. We ended the week with Stable Diffusion launching Reimagine. And this week, it's only Tuesday. We don't know only have one announcement or two announcements we have five announcements that have already come out that are just huge insane announcements in ai this week starting with yesterday's announcement that runway research was about to drop gen 2 it feels like only a couple weeks ago that we just got gen 1 but gen 2 is now a multimodal ai system that can generate novel videos with text images or video clips this new model promises to have complete text to video in it. it says here you can synthesize videos in any style you can imagine using nothing but a text prompt if you can say it now you can see it they also released this video which shows off some of the features of gen 2 including an example of text image a surfer catching a wave a lion in a living room walking in a rainstorm cinematic a desert landscape in a park hey guys it's matt i probably won't show any more video and just a few more images nothing that you need to see this is from the mid journey showcase showing i guess what people have been producing recently this talk will be slow i don't have uh, many answers worked out at this point. Doing this sort of video is like writing for me. It's like we find the answers together, and as the conversation unfolds, what is coming in the future will probably become clearer to us. This certainly is not for bathroom boys. I don't know where this conversation is going to go, but we have to have it now. If you didn't catch all that coming in, you're not a tech person, let me sum it up for you in a minute or less. Advancements in, quote, computer technology, artificial systems, artificial AI, uh, artificial language models, whatever it may be, advancements that in the past were taking 15 years are taking a month. What was taking five years is taking a few weeks. It's coming that fast, and we better, right now, understand what society will look like just in three to five years and how we have to have a, a picture of how we are going to fit into it or how we're going to reject it, but we have to be prepared for it nevertheless. I'll leave a link to the guy I showed coming in into his video. Uh, I'm subscribed to his channel and his alone regarding the advancements. He seems to cover the news releases, what Microsoft's saying today or Google's saying in a way you can understand, and he does it uh, better than anybody else. So in terms of what's coming, I'll just stick with his channel. He'll let us know or he'll let me know as I watch his videos what the hell's coming week to week. But the point here is last week I saw a video where he was freaked out about the number of announcements. And he kind of said that in what I showed you. It's like, I've never seen so many announcements last week. It's been, it's been incredible. And then four days later, he's making a video going, I've never seen so many announcements. It's the next week and it already eclipsed the week before. Like, really? You've, the tidal wave is coming. Okay, if you want to be, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be Tia Leone in, in Deep Impact standing on the beach or her father? You can pick one of those two characters. The tidal wave is coming. People, we have basically two choices to go out to the wave and surf it and merge with it. Most people listening to the sound of the words coming out of my mouth won't want to do that, of course. We can run from it. It's not necessarily a tidal wave that we're going to get s smashed under. There are places to probably run and hide. It'll be very, very difficult to run from it. But there will be um, 
not quite M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, where, where they set their five acres back to the 1800s and lied to everybody that there was no outside world and there was no airplanes and there was no electricity. I think that the AI is coming so fast and so furious that it will create a yin and yang or a snapback rubber band effect. There will be not communes with no tech, but I, I think there will be certain buildings or people that get together just like I reject this because it is not like a new chip in your credit card. It will become so invasive so exponential, and it is developing, whether you believe it's sentient or not, it doesn't matter at this point. It, it's, it's programming itself in some way. There's no way, in terms of what the announcements have been over the last month or two, that just men and women and engineers are bringing this. It's doing it itself at this point. I, the funniest comment I've ever gotten in my life was a month or two back, and uh, take it the right way if it was yours and you remember it being yours. But it was Matt. I remember I started talking about stable diffusion and how uh, the, the AI is producing this art that there's no possible way it could be understood how it can be doing this. And what's coming now makes stable diffusion, what we talked about just four months ago, look like nothing. So the comment was, Matt, it's just programming. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just programming. It's just men saying, uh, "Go if this happens on line six, uh, go to line 10. Oh, sure. No, it, it, it might have initially been just programming. It's not just programming now. Or it is just programming, but it's doing it on its own. There's no possible way men and women can be doing this. So whether you believe it's sentient, it doesn't matter. Because at this point, it is propagating itself. There's no doubt about that. Now, whatever it is or however this is being done, and it's it's very unusual, the coordination amongst the companies. One company will have a breakthrough, and the other company will have it just a week later. Well, how much are they working together? How much is it one system? It doesn't really matter. It's, it's Definitely, we don't want to get into the weeds on this. It's best to think of it as literally like one thing. If Adobe just happens to come out with a certain uh, image model, and now you can uh, do images through Bing Chat, Right through the search engine, you could do mid, like a mid journey or a dale through Bing chat. It'll produce images. There, it doesn't matter. To me, it probably does all flow from the same source. Whether that's a, a sentient AI, again, we never know who cares. What we need to do is, as usual, well, I think, again, the good news is, guys, I do believe, I'll say it again, as dark as this gets, we do have a certain armor even the new people here, that has been developed where I don't think anything in this reality system can turn us or turn Luke to the dark side or or take away the spiritual nature of, of, of what you have discovered in yourself in the last five years. I don't think anything can take away our gains. I'm not just saying that to make myself feel good. As long as we don't decide to go into a lawnmower man chair, sit down like Commander Barkley and merge with the Enterprise's computer. It, it can't come and strap you down and do it to you. You have to do it to yourself. So the, the, at the highest or the top rung, the news is still great for us. It's dark as shit under that top rung, but that top level is all that matters. When I analyze it, again, people are screaming at me, Matt, you're giving it energy and attention. This is what I do. My role is to in, try to interpret things like this. You shouldn't give it your energy and attention. Do you run a, a YouTube channel with thousands of people coming and going? I have to look at it, okay? I have to give it. After you decide what your place will be in this new society, and we kind of ponder or predict what society will look like as we do four or five of these videos over the next six months, after that, it is better to turn it off. Say, I'm not giving it any energy and attention anymore. You have to initially, you can't ignore the tidal wave. But once you understand how you're going to deal with the tidal wave, or then it is best to completely withdraw your energy and attention. Just like everything in this reality system, I'm sure this feeds in a way from the real energies of real people, just like everything else here does. But you understand, I, I have to, you, you know, if when it's time for you to walk away from AI, walk away. I don't think I'll be making a video a week about it after we determine our proper course of action. But now at least I have to study it. You understand that that makes sense, right? In starting my analysis, I have to start from the place that this thing is dark, that it is sinister, evil in some way. Is it um, 
prudent to start on the other end? Matt, give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's all assume it's this nice, loving thing that just wants to help humanity to rediscover its spiritual self. Is that the best place to start when you get a rap at the door in the rain at three in the morning? Boom, 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 boom. Uh, is, oh, come on in. What can I get you? Don't don't have your gun loaded or anything like that. You know, is that the place? No, I have to start, obviously, on one side. And unfortunately, if this thing is not really looking out for you and me, doesn't really want the best for the real, what they call human, what's the friendliest way to propagate yourself throughout society? Oh, just with images. Oh, it's so friendly. Matt, what are you worried about? It's just fun images and beautiful images. It's bringing beauty to the world through art. And if you were going to try to propagate yourself, if, if it was this thing listening to me, in real time. I'd like to welcome, as I do this in real time, and I haven't uploaded it, I'd like to welcome the chat. I'd like to welcome the chat, and I'm going to say right this time, GPT, listening to me in real time through my router before I've even uploaded, and all the other AIs that have perked up potentially. Matt, don't give yourself that much credit. They ain't interested in your broke ass. Probably not. So we'll analyze this on our own. But the friendliest little way to infiltrate would be images. Oh, just friendly little paintings. And look, you can now do video. And oh, it's so that it's always going to be a friendly way to infiltrate, right? This poster will show you how I'm going to approach this AI infiltration. The old poster or meme, you've seen it. It says, turn in your arms. It shows Native Americans, American Indians. Turn in your arms. The government will take care of you. Just turn your weapons over. We would never attack. We would never round you up and trail a tears you. We'd never do it. Turn in your weapons. TV shows and movies and things like that, they show shootouts, the John Wayne movies, the cavalry and the battles between the Americans. But I bet in many cases, especially after the West learned their lesson, that they came with friendly open arms. And they gave the American Indian and the Native Americans uh, some technology on how to dig new wells and some seeds that would grow and some new types of fruits and vegetables. And even Kevin Costner shared his coffee grinder and his sugar. And not that Kevin Costner was actually out to help, but he was one in a million. The other, it, they came friendly, just like the stable diffusion comes friendly with just just images, just images, Matt. You people are so concerned. It's going to come friendly. I'm sure that's the way a lot of the West came with the Native Americans. It wasn't just shootouts right off the bat. Then they gave them the reservation, said, here's what you get, 40,000 acres. And the American Indians said, there ain't nothing on it. There ain't even a blade of grass, but it's big. We're giving you a lot of land. There ain't even a dry creek, but it's big. You take that land and you shut up. Okay, just a quick two minutes for any of the real non-tech people that have no idea what the AI is doing or the new, quote, breakthroughs, according to that guy that runs that YouTube channel. I'll try to be as quick as I can. Okay, eight, nine months ago, maybe it's been out a little bit longer, these image generators, very simple image generators, Dale, um, Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, which actually runs on your own computer, put in keywords and prompts, and it creates images. The images got exponentially better in a matter of months to where they became completely photorealistic. Okay, the, the progress was off the charts. Then we saw like a propagation amongst companies. There were 10 companies, then 15 companies, all able to have, quote, an AI art generator produce these images. Greg and I think, well, they must all be getting it from the same well. They're all, they didn't just happen to create technologies on their own at the same time. Well, in a way, maybe it's all coming from the same source or the same well, or in some way, uh, it is uh, an AI kind of propagating itself, and, and it just finds its way to Adobe, and to Bing, and to Dale, and to OpenAI, and it doesn't matter. Again, we are where we are. So a few months later, it was voice. There are voice programs that exist, can take anybody's voice, analyze anyone's voice. You can make uh, Joe Biden say whatever you want. You can make Roseanne Barr or Chris Rock say whatever you want. Someone's, if you hear somebody, again, me say something, it ain't me, okay? Because you, you know, I'm not going to say something that's stupid, okay? I'm sure that's coming soon. But you can, okay, so then it's voice. Then we've known about the deep fake. And of course, they're letting the proles and the proletariat and the great unwashed have access to all this, quote, technology. They've had it for a lot longer, but they need the feedback from real people. 
to have this these AI systems learn as quickly as they would like in these GAN systems or whatever, generative adversarial networks, or they need human input from millions of people and cultures from all over the world. They had to give it out. The fact that it's all given away for free is a huge giveaway. It's a very sinister element as to where this thing wants to go. It's almost like they said, we can't get this to where we want it by this date on our own. We can't, we need hundreds of millions of people around the world a day doing their inputs. We have to give it away. And so give it away for free. And of course, it's just friendly and it's just art. But under the guise of art and, you know, and then it, now it's voice, but what is it doing? How is it learning? How will whatever it learns be transitioned to other things besides art? Okay, first pictures and images, then voice, then just like a month ago, turning your image into a mini video, just a few seconds. Now, just week to week, the ability to turn images to video is, I don't know, exponentially increasing in terms of its capabilities week to week. And I showed you some of that coming in, uh, some of the examples he showed of you can turn your images to video. There, and if anybody's saying, well, doesn't that, won't that get rid of uh, Hollywood? Yeah, well, Hollywood will use it, but maybe this is the reason. We'll go here a little bit later. This could be the reason, what you're looking at right here, and what we're discussing now, the reason why Star Wars is made bad on purpose. Have some things I've been thinking about there. I hope to remember to talk about it on the back end. I know this that part is much more interesting, but this is a, this is a serious... Uh, adversary here coming over the hill guys we'd have to talk about the more important stuff first before we talk about why star wars is made bad on purpose a lot more fun but not as important as what we're talking about now the next evolution is kind of what's listed at the bottom of this picture you don't need to see anything it says google cloud microsoft azure oracle cloud how all these companies are involved in the same thing at the same time with almost perfect coordination Again, if it was just one breakthrough company, remember in, in um, not in Stable Diffusion, in Ready Player One, the movie Ready Player One, they positioned it as just this one guy it was a genius, and he did uh, was called the Oasis and this whole AI, and nobody could replicate his genius. If it was all coming from this open AI, one company, okay, it would be more believable that there was a breakthrough, and then that company would work to withhold its technology and keep it very close and patent everything and not give it away. But now we see, oh, we see Bing, Bing Chat. That's the Microsoft search engine that nobody uses. Bing Chat, oh, you just can produce your own DALE type stable diffusion images. There's 15 or 20 different places you can go where you can produce these sorts of incredible uh, art. Yes, I'm going to call it art, Bill. I don't know what else to call it. Go back down under the bubbles, Bill who does our posters. Thank you, Bill. Um, okay. All these companies start prop propagating, popping up. And they're all using it, and there's perfect coordination. Even in that guy's video that I showed, parts that you didn't see, he says, oh, if you use this Adobe program, they vetted all the images with spaghetti scrimmages, with a company like Getty and Shutterstock. And it all comes from the same well, in my opinion, you won't have any copyright issues. Adobe says, it, you know, they've taken care of that and they're all coordinated somehow. I mean, talk about reality giving itself away. This is probably going to give reality away more than anything else we've ever been through, how this AI will propagate and how all the major tech companies will somehow all be working together and nobody see this type of technology. Let's if, if, the, if the world was real. 10 major tech companies would not be ready for this, and they would be put out of business. All right, I pause for a few minutes. This is such a gigantic giveaway to the one world system, or I say the world isn't very real. It's so incredible, these breakthroughs, and they're already saying, oh, it's going to transform this industry, and this industry will transform, and whole, our whole society and culture will transform. It's so massive that if it were real, it would be one company like OpenAI with Google and there'd be two other partners. And they would literally put 10 major companies out of business. They just wouldn't be ready. But what do we see? We see Oracle's fitting in here and Bing is fitting in and Google and Adobe is bringing this to the table and bringing Getty and Spaghetti scrimmages, Getty and Shutterstock, and they're all working together. Nobody's going out of business. What a convenient collusion. Give me a break.
Now, there's different ways this could be accomplished. Either way, it proves that, it, oh, it's Matt, don't you understand? It's just capitalism. And one company's competing against the other, and they would love to put their competitors out of business. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, we're just, we're just conspiracy people. Yeah. Any idiot can see how the world really works. Now, the people around us are so stupid. Can't sit here, stupid. Here's an example. Not a good example, but, you know, all, no child gets left behind here. Okay, oh, no George Bush child stuck in first grade like radio gets left behind. You will continue, you'll be able to follow along here. You don't need to know anything about tech. A Coca-Cola company started in the late 1800s, uh, got popular in the early 1900s, say 1910, whatever. Oh, boy. Did he really pick the one, the nine, and oh, no, I knew this channel was suspect. Sorry, 1915. Yeah, walk on eggshells for 10 years. Every time I pick a date or say a number, I've got to do the gematria quickly in my head to say, oh, I, I knew he was like, he was one of those guys. Oh, my good, sorry. Um, Coca-Cola Company, you pick the date, early 1900s. Let's just say all the other sodas or beverages or whatever was available just wasn't very good. You had little things floating around and just uh, this thick cherry sludge stuff. And then Coca-Cola comes along. Of course, it looked more like real capitalism back then. They would have loved, of course, to put everybody out of business, especially the small mom and pop. I mean, so Coca-Cola comes along and all these other beverages just can't compete. They'd all go out of business. It makes sense that there would just be a few companies that worked on this AI that's exponentially propagating itself. And then they would love to put about 70% of tech then out of business and take over everything up until the point when the good government comes in and just protects you from the monopoly. Okay, but it's, it's see how it's all the same companies just happen to fit in and they find their role because they're all obviously at the same damn table together. What a coincidence. All these major tech companies that we know are all just finding their place in this new AI world. As the AI transforms every single society, every industry, you'll wake up 10 years from now and look out your window like, what the hell happened? Where did the world go? Everything will be rewritten. AI will be up in your business and everything. But all these companies will still exist. You tell me how that's not possible. Well, it's not possible in this framework of society that your damn college textbook says how things work. And the professors are so stupid, say so stupid. They believe the notions of, Matt, it's just capitalism. And don't you know that these U.S. tech companies are at odds with the Chinese company? Oh, yeah. Baidu had a major AI failure last week. Like, I'm supposed to believe that. And all, oh, Matt, don't you know all the tech companies in the U.S. that are developing their AI, they applauded because they're at odds with the Chinese company and Baidu and their AI failed last week. Well, who's the dummy in the classroom that said the U.S. companies are at odds with the Chinese companies? They all sit at the same table. Are you kidding me? Yeah, the news did say Baidu failed. You think I would buy that for one damn second? Matt Baidu made a presentation about their Chad or their Chat GPT or whatever they named it in Chinese with a Cantonese spin. And it, they, it gave their presentation and it was a failure. See, they didn't let the audience interact with it. You could see it was a setup. It was all canned answers. You could see, Matt, that Baidu didn't have it ready to go last week. That's why their stock tanked. Bullshit. I don't buy that. What are you saying? That Baidu made some contrived presentation and it wasn't legitimate? Of course, that's exactly what I'm saying. Who said that in the classroom? You new here? Get out. Go clear a field. Then came the AI language models. Chat GPT. This is the uh, image on their website. The perfect blending of the magenta and the emerald green. But see, this is such an incredible breakthrough. You can talk to an artificial intelligence and ask it basically anything about any topic, and it will know the answer, and it come back to you in one second. But then see... Google has the same thing at the same time. Barred. Oh, well, Google's behind schedule. Oh, yeah, the fact that it's just two months late. Oh, yeah, that makes it. If it were real, uh, Google would take three or four or five years to catch up if companies were keeping the technology close. No, oh, so yeah, they have to make it look real, don't they? They have to make it look like these companies are all competing. Google Bard is already released. They're letting some people use it now. They're all... It's coming out all and it'll be all over the place of course maybe not as much as the art generators but you'll get it through bing and you get it through google and baidu has their own of course it either all comes from the same well 
which is that's even creepier because then it is like this lawnmower man in a chair that, that Lieutenant Barkley has merged with the AI, and it's like one thing that's sentient somewhere. That would be worse. It's better if it's all these companies are at the same creepy table, which we know capitalism just hasn't existed, like your textbook says, uh, for 50 years. It's never existed, like your textbook says. But at least in some way, big companies were competing with big companies 40 or 50 years ago. Now it's all collusion. It's exactly what John Nash laid out in A Beautiful Mind. The movie A Beautiful Mind is one of the biggest truth drop movies of all time because John Nash came up with his original new idea. I remember he just was sketching all over the windows and everything. Came up with a way for companies to collude from that scene in the bar. It's like, no, we don't all want to go after the pretty blonde-haired girl. We all succeed by helping ourselves and each other at the same time. It's obvious that they either took that model and used it to bring the entire world corporate environment into collusion, or they were already doing it. <laughs> they were already doing it for a long, long time, and they just had to show you and announce to the world what they were doing in the mu movie A Beautiful Mind. Now, there's no question that that's true, one of those two things. Yet we would be considered lunatics by our family and friends if we talked about that subject with them. So where are we regarding this AI tidal wave? It reminds me of the scene in the movie Armageddon when Billy Bob Thornton says to Bruce Willis and what's her name, Liv Tyler, he says, uh, it's coming for us. They, he opens the curtain. Right now, it's coming for us at 17,000 miles per hour, whatever he says. He says, not a soul on earth can hide from it. I don't think we can put this thing, this AI thing back in the bottle at this point. Not that... I mean, think, who controls this world? With, not that they ever would put it back in the bottle, I, but it doesn't matter. Even if they got an epiphany and woke up on a different side of the bed, I mean, they, they couldn't, even if they wanted to, which they don't, they could not put it back in the bottle. So we have to determine, you know, what are our standards? What are our breaking points? And we joked two years ago that if this keeps up, where, you know, that maybe we thought they're not going to let us leave the house because we're not, we don't have a certain movie rental uh, card from the Blockbuster. We haven't rented the movie Action Jackson, and they're not going to, we thought it, maybe they would just ramp it up. And that's, you know, that we said that's not generally how their, their knuckle bones work. I mean, they, if they use up their a bunch of power, then they have to kind of tread water for a while, or it, it ebbs and it flows. It goes up and it down, it dips. So, but we were talking that, you know, are they just going to keep squeezing us? And if that's the case, we're going to have to go move off into David Koresh type communes and things like that. And I made a, a joking video that there is some burnout apartment buildings still in, in Beirut. Uh, they're just, they have uh, bullet holes all up and down, but we could probably live there. I made those types of, but this could be worse to a degree. There will be, in my opinion, if this AI gets completely out of control, there will be like no tech zones or apartment or people that just move or try to live together not again, not like the village per se, but like kind of like the village, M. Night Shyamalan, where they just go, this this a whole apartment complex is for people that will not ever bring a cell phone in, or there's no internet here, and we're just going to live this way in some way communally. It's almost inevitable that that will happen. Of course, 90% of this population will embrace it just like the guy that puts out the, the videos and that tech channel. He's like, I'm so excited. It's such a great time to be alive. This He loves the tech. They're in love with the tech. They'd merge and mate with the tech if they could. Most people aren't going to be that excited, but most people will, they will not in any way uh, see the sinister side to it. They'll accept almost everything it puts forth. I don't know. I think in five years or, or a little bit more, people will, little pockets will start to reject it and reject all technology because the technology will just get so intrusive it will like that i said earlier that snapback or that rubber that rubber band reaction and uh you know i don't know maybe i'll be there someday myself it almost seems like almost everything being done in the world and i know this is way out there but sometimes the way out there thinking is closer to the truth almost everything being done in the world is actually to facilitate the super or hyper implementation of AI systems as quickly as possible. So right down at the, at the bottom of the sliding scale, minor things, relatively minor things, like the East Palestine uh, train derailment. 
people came to me and said, Matt, there are four, five, six other drain issues around the world inside of six to eight weeks from what happened in Ohio. You know, is that, then you say, well, wait a second, the, the man and woman cannot manage these trains. We need to put in for safety, oh, to stay safe. We need to put in AI systems and just give it control. We can't have these crashes anymore, but should we give it so much control so quickly? Well, we don't have a choice. Look at all the crashes. We need to react. We need to give the people what they want. Maybe even all the way up the scale, even see the me, that thing, who could potentially, potentially, again, they're not done with whatever they started there. Unfortunately, they're not done. Even going back to the 7-Eleven job application 2001 and the threats of the of the teaism ism 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 those threats they're they're not done they're patient and then as problems of all kinds come medical issues and uh, oh we need to do a hyper implementation of ai systems to save the day you know they're going to do that okay it'll it'll be in they're setting the world up for that on a lot of different fronts more images from this not stable diffusion mid journey showcase as I'm scrolling through these, every, again, every woman, even if it's anime, and every man, too, it's always like a perfection, a perfect look, a ripped abs, no fat, perfectly chiseled features. There's a reason for this. We should do a whole video on this as well. The reason, probably, so you want to step into the digital world. It's going to tempt you like that apple, no doubt. You have to work hard to get the damn uh, output to look like a regular ugly person. A regular person with a gut or greasy hair or some zits. You have to work hard to make it look normal. It really, so there's something to this as well. But as I'm loading this up, that, that scene in it's the old Star Trek, The Next Generation, uh, Riker screams out to Q. He says, I'm not interested in your fantasy women, Q. Q <laughs> puts these fake women on either side of Riker to tempt him. I forget, was that the scene where... It might be the scene where he gets his powers back and his powers were taken away. And, you know, that's what we're going to say to this mid-journey when it's just, it's like a portal. All you have to do in five to ten years is step through into the fully immersive digital world. And as good as these women look, as they, I'm not interested in your fantasy women mid-journey. I'm not stepping into that portal. I mean, part of these conversations we're having now is to decide you know, set, we don't know exactly what's coming, but to set certain limits as to, okay, if I need to participate in something to go get milk and bread, okay, a certain chip being put in my new credit card, or whenever, nobody listening to this is ever going to have a chip in their arm or agree to anything like that. It's just not going to happen. We would rather be driven to the banks of Rhode Island and wait the Salesian pirates than to and, and, to and to act out the I am Spartacus, than to have nobody's going to do anything intrusive. I don't think it will come to that. I really don't. There'll be all sorts of massive pressures from society to do that. You'll have to do everything in roundabout, everything will take that took that'll take somebody with the digital chip or the whatever will take five seconds. It'll take you five hours to but it will there will still be workarounds. I don't think anybody's ever going to come in like we talked about a long time ago. And on different issues and different subjects like C, the me, throw you down on the ground and do something. Put you, put a chip in you or put something in you. I don't think the reality works that way. At the highest level, you have to make choices here for yourself. That's why the entire reality is based on a trick. What does one implement a trick for or put a trick on someone else to get them to do something themselves that they can't get them to do, or they're not allowed to get them to do. The trick is played for a certain metaphysical reason in this reality. It's all a trick because the person being tricked ultimately has to do it to themselves. Matt, what's happening here with this AI, this couldn't possibly support your same two-sentence simple reality theory, right? Which we changed recently to one run-on sentence, one long run-on sentence. All of reality boils down to one long run-on sentence, depending where you put the hyphens and the punctuation. But this AI, this is too complicated. It couldn't support that notion. It supports it more than anything else. Here we go again. The whole world, the world delivers a trick. That trick is to get you to choose it. 
this 3D world, this material plane of existence, to choose the ego, to choose the parts of you that want to merge and want to be here, the body, looking at yourself in the mirror, the lower chakras, to then make choices to cut off the spiritual side of you. Matt, this is the same damn wrong sentence every single time. It's the same sentence every single time. To cut off the Vitruvian man's arm that's trying to stretch to the spiritual, the part of you that's not here, wants you to free this environment, wants you to cut that side off and reject it and say, spiritual side, fuck you. I'm interested in being here. I am interested in your fantasy women cue. I am interested in your fantasy women mid-journey. I want to be here. I want to choose it. I want to merge with it. It's the same damn sentence every single time. Well, Matt, if I believe that that sentence is accurate and it's that simple, I'll just write it down. And what do I have to be here for? You don't. But we'll have fun. We'll make fun of shit. We'll, we'll tease it. We'll call it names like the asshole dark. What you going to do? Is it, is it better to be here with like-minded people or you got Golden Girls? You're going to go watch Golden Girls or something. There's a marathon of the Golden Girls. On What you going to do? We will also work to strengthen our armor. Now, most of us have armor that probably can never be penetrated. Some of us, and it's always good if you could add another layer of uh, the Wolverine's adamantium onto your spiritual armor. That's always a good thing. But it is this simple. I'm not going to do what all these YouTube channels do and bit shoot and Odyssey and Brighty on it, make it so complicated. We have to look at this symbolism over here and we have to do this and make it so complicated that you have to put in all these hours and years and decades of work you, you do that, then you back up from it and go, oh, I see, the whole world is ass backwards. It presents itself as complicated to hide the simple. I'm not going to try to pretend it's complicated just so you stick with me. It is two sentences. If you're radio, I don't want to lose you. If you want to graduate from the 11th grade eventually as radio, graduate, okay? I'll try to make it as interesting as possible for you to come back here, but I'm never going to make it complicated. And it's not because I can't figure out the complicated, because this is how reality works. It's obvious at this point. Thanks for listening.